Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at the Pareto distribution. Now this distribution is useful for students of undergraduate courses in insurance, finance, business and accounting, let's say. So this is where you're probably going to come across it, and economics. Okay. Now this distribution is also known as the Pareto Type 1 distribution, just to clarify the particular case. This, the reason for that is that there's other distributions that are related to the Pareto distribution are called the Pareto Type 2 distribution. So this is just to emphasize which particular version of what we are using. Okay, so the Pareto Type 1 distribution. Consider a random variable x that follows a Pareto Type 1 distribution with parameters alpha greater than 0 and xm greater than 0. Okay, now XM is something we're specifically interested in here. This is one of the parameters of the Pareto Type 1 distribution, which is the minimum threshold. Okay, so have a look at the formulas there and you'll sort of see the relevance of this. Okay, and that likewise alpha. So here are our exercises. Derive the median of the distribution. Derive an expression for the probability that X lies between 2xm and 3xm, which is to say twice the minimum and three times the, three times the minimum, what is the range of probability of being in that interval. In the context of wealth distributions, what does the median of the Pareto distribution represent and how does it compare to the mean in terms of equality measures? Inequality measures, I should say. Uh, in the context of insurance, how can the median and interval probabilities of the Pareto distribution be used to assess the likelihood and severity of large claims? So exercises C and D are essentially short theory questions just to actually motivate the student of business or finance or economics or whatever, just to actually sort of see the importance of this distribution over the course of their career and how it will be useful in their studies. Okay. So, anyway, this is the toughest one, I think, or these two are tough enough. Exercise A and B. So, the first one, derive the median of the distribution. Okay. So, the game plan here is usually follows the same for any time you have to find the median of a distribution. To find the median of a distribution, you set the cumulative distribution function f of x and equal, let that equal to 0 0.5 and solve for x. Okay. And pretty much in every case, this is how you tackle the median of the distribution questions. So in this particular case, f of x, the cumulative distribution function, is 1 minus xm divided by x to the power of alpha. And recall that xm is a parameter of the distribution where x is the value that we are trying to solve. And we have alpha there as well as the power. And we're going to let that equal to 0 0.5. So the first thing we're going to do is just rearrange that expression uh, algebraically, just simplify it a bit, okay? And we have xm divided by x to the power of alpha equals 0 0.5. Now, specifically what we're interested in is x. What we want to do is solve for x, okay? So let's just invert both sides. So we have x to the power of alpha divided by xm to the power of alpha, and that is equal to 2. Okay, so 1 over 0 0.5 is 2. Okay, so basically on the left hand side we're swapping the numerator and the denominator, and we have to do something similar on the right hand side of the equation. Okay, so 0 0.5 becomes 1 over 0 0.5, which becomes 2. Okay, so now we end up with x to the power of alpha equals 2 times xm to the power of alpha. So essentially what we're doing there is just cross multiplying that fraction. And now we're sort of getting very close. We have an expression in terms of x. Okay. So what we're going to do there is just use power laws and just multiply each or put uh, each term in that expression to the power of 1 over alpha. So x to the power of alpha times or to put it to the power of 1 over alpha, you just end up with x. And you just the same thing for xm, we also have to do it for 2. So 2 ends up as 2 to the power of 1 divided by alpha. Okay, so that is our median, xm times 2 to the power of 1 over alpha. Okay, so that's what we have to do for this particular exercise. Exercise B, derive an expression for the probability that xm it lies between 2xm and, or that x lies between 2xm and 3xm. Okay, 
So what we have to do there is calculate this interval probability, probability of x being between 2xm and 3xm. And to do that, what we will do there is we use the cumulative distribution function of f of 3xm minus f of 2xm. Okay. So using the expression that we have before, f of 3xm is 1 minus xm divided by 3xm to the power of alpha. And what we're do, going to do is subtract f of 2xm, and that is 1 minus xm divided by 2xm to the power of alpha. Okay. Now essentially what we could do there is just rearrange that equation algebraically, similar to what we've done before. Okay. So what we end up with is xm divided by 2xm to the power of alpha minus xm to the power of 3xm to the power of alpha. Now xm divided by 3xm is simply one third and similarly xm divided by 2xm is one half. Okay. So that this actually works out fairly quickly. So what we end up with is the interval probability that we are looking for is f or sorry uh, p of probability of x being between 2xm and 3xm okay is simply 1 uh, one half to the power of alpha minus one third to the power of alpha okay now remember we're not actually asked for any calculations we just are asked to derive an expression and that's the expression that we need so a little bit of theory now. So why would we use the median? And this is relevant to the economists. Uh, the median represents the wealth level below which 50% of the population lies. Okay, so that's why it would be relevant. And in comparison with the mean in a Pareto distribution, the mean is often significantly higher than a median. So you should be familiar with the idea of a skewed distribution and a symmetric distribution. This is a skewed distribution. Okay. This is due to the heavy tail of the distribution where a small number of individuals hold a disproportionate amount of wealth. So this disparity highlights the inequality inherent in such distributions. Okay, So essentially it's why the median is uh, an important part of this distribution because it does, it's more informative about the wealth of the general population. Okay, And in insurance, the median can be used to estimate the so typical size of insurance claims. It provides a measure of central tendency that is less sensitive to extreme outliers. For interval probabilities, by calculating probabilities for different intervals, insurers can assess the likelihood of large claims. This information helps in setting premiums, reserving funds and managing risks. So that's it. Uh, those two last questions are essentially just to motivate undergraduate students you probably wouldn't get that in the exam okay we'll leave it there